Coolio, I for I, I closed the thing that has the intro. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> um, I am a hundred percent gonna keep that in as the cold open. Um, hello, I'm Flower, aka Rose. Uh, my co-witches. That's it. That's my info. Um. Okay. I'm Fish, aka Stingray, and I'm having sleep token withdrawals. <laughs> Uh, Goshen, Sweet Token, but specifically Granite by Sweet Token, because that song just scratches my brain so well. I'm obsessed with it, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> also, the way I knew a Sweet Token song before they took off on, like, they're really popular on TikTok and stuff right now, <laughs> and it's just as a whole, you know, like, with that always and stuff. Um, but I knew... I fucking sleep token songs with fathers and I didn't even fucking know it. I'm sick. I'm so sick. I could have been listening to this shit for, for years. Be so serious. Oh my god. Anyways. You're so nice. While you were doing that, I was finishing the exporting of the audio for the Dino Stud episode. Because yes, we are filming this episode the same day as the Dino Stud and the Unleashed episode. Despite the fact that this is... Wait, let me count. One, two, three... Four episodes? Or four, yeah, four episodes later? Here we are. I literally forgot that we already did, we did that also today. <laughs> I love that for you. you know, it feels Unleashed like a different day. Um, Unleashed goes up the 14th of April, and this one goes up the 12th of May. I hope you know whenever we record the, uh, the episode, I'm making you put it next, as in whenever you get it done, upload it, get it done, it's being uploaded as the next episode, and you have to push the other ones back, I hope you don't know. Um, I listen to the next one as an erotica. Yes. <gasps> Why are you trying to tell me otherwise when it comes to the Wicker King? Let me be a little dramatic. Let me be I, a I, little thought, I thought we were going to low-key do that one the same month that we are going to do the other K from Double K and Crow? Yeah, we're going to do the two K and the same month. Oh, but have you seen the one, the synopsis, the one that just has those synopsis and stuff called Icarus? I think, oh, I need it so bad. Yeah, I need it so bad. Yeah, I a video about it. We were talking about that. when. I know, I need it so bad. I know you know that, but I have to talk about it because, oh my god! Anyways, I love how I like this, but I've technically only read one K Ingram, two if you count the novella, but it's technically the same story, so one K Ingram. And I don't even know if it was just a fluke or if I really like King Crow. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I like we'll know in June, home. okay? We will. I would like everyone at home like to know. This is very much what it is like <laughs> every day. <laughs> Uh, You're welcome. In an episode coming to you at some point. Um. Anyways, today's episode is um things we never got over by Lucy Score. Did I actually get the author name right? Did you actually get everything right, Cohen? Yes. Dude, I hate trying to say the names of these books. Oh my god, I got the author's name right too. Um, hilariously, I think this second one just came out like a month ago. Yeah, almost exactly a month ago. Um, it came out like three days after I read it, okay? I love it for you. Um, yeah, Stingray read Things We Never Got Over Before I Did. Um, it is in the same vlog as Unleashed where Stingray made me read three random books. And this is one of them because uh, throughout the reading process, I was told that the comedy was my style and this was so me. And so I was forced to read this 500 plus page book. Um, it's fine. And you had a good time. I just say I did like it, and I rated it 3.5 stars. Now, I'm going to tell you now, I have less notes. Um, It's about half a page. But it's because I, before, like, when I was like, maybe two chapters in, and I was ready to, like, start, like, taking notes, detailed notes like I do normally, you know, if you listen to any of the other episodes, you know. Um, but then I was like, wait a second, this is a popular book. So I looked it up, and there is a plot summary on mine. So I did not go into depth and detail about the plot. I just have my general thoughts throughout the book. Um, and you can pop in with any of your thoughts. It's gonna be more like the Wilder Girls episode, and less of the every That's other. That's when you actually like this one.
I'm so excited because uh, I gave this book five stars. Shocker, I know. <laughs> I never uh, write anything five stars. I think I have like 25 books or something. If you have psychological issues, read books you actually enjoy and you know you won't enjoy. Maybe you would have more better experiences with your life and with your videos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I love, I love when the podcast tries to make it so it's automatically labeled as clean. <laughs> Could you imagine an episode where we didn't swear? Okay, where Dude, I, I didn't swore swear. in the cold open of this. Okay, but we all know I swear more than you because I, I have psychological issues. So I can still get caught off guard when you oh, swear, yeah, okay? I an intro uh, or description for this. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to write a free type so that I can have it saved as a draft. Um, I'm multitasking. We know this. Listen, you were looking up Instagram reels. <laughs> 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 the last one. Oh, my God. The way that the Dino Stud episode is the second shortest pre-edited. The only one that's shorter is the Wilder Girls one. I wonder why. <laughs> Uh, anyways, <laughs> anyways, things we never got over. Um, spoilers, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, but spoilers, because, like, that's a thing I have to remember to mention. Um, but yes, uh, I... You are incapable of talking about anything without saying stuff we're not supposed to, so... That is true. That is very true. Listen, I went on a tangent about the outfits on the covers of the books in the last episode that we recorded, so, you know... It's fine. Listen, there is so much personal lore in these episodes already that it's sick in the head, in my head, you know? Explain to me, I started to read the synopsis, or the summary, that goes like, the novel is told in first-person chapters that alternate between Naomi and Knox's perspectives. They use their last names. I didn't know Knox's last name was Morgan. How did I not know this? How did you, seriously, that's a genuine question. How did you not know? Uh, Knox, Morgan, and Naomi Witt. <laughs> so I love them, and I love Waylay. I love Waylay so much. I do like Naomi. I really like her character. That's why I'm kind of worried about reading the second one. Cause like while I do like his brother Nash, who it follows, I'm not sure. I don't really know enough about the other the female characters so to like really. Yeah, so I'm worried. Um. Well, I know the other characters are still gonna be in there because it's set in the same town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously. yeah. Same town, knock them out town. <laughs> Which is I love the name of the town. It's so funny. Especially since they punch people a lot. Yeah, literally that's how. There's a, there's that one chapter where Knox and Nash fight in Knox's front yard, and then Naomi and Waylay come, and they're like, "What the hell is going on?" And yeah. they're we're literally in Knox's point of view. It's in Knox's point of view, so he's like, "This is how you settle things. Knock them out. You knock them out." Um. So. Basically, um, the book starts with Naomi arriving in a small town in Virginia uh, called Knock Em Out. Who could have guessed? <laughs> uh, to help out her twin sister, Tina. Uh, we learned this a little bit later on, but Naomi kind of looks like a hot mess because she's been kind of driving since she ran away from her own wedding. Um, she literally climbed out of the attic window of the church. So, you know, good times. Um, so, Naomi and her sister have drifted apart. Uh, Naomi is eager to reconnect, though, uh, as she tries to, like, handle the emotional strains of just, like, running away from her own goddamn wedding, um, with a really rich guy, um, who try to look richer than they actually are, I don't know, something weird there, um, so, oh, it was a bathroom window, according to this synopsis, or summary, um, she climbed out of the bathroom window, right, um, so, her sister, uh, calls her up and is like, hey, come to and meet me at this coffee shop. She goes to this coffee shop, she enters, she instantly sees a mugshot that's like, don't, uh, don't, I can't think of words sir? anymore. Sir? <laughs> yes, serve, um, this woman, and it's a picture of Tina, but, like, Naomi and Tina are twins, um, identical twins. So, Naomi walks in, and she's like, hello, I need coffee. She's a caffeine addict. Me too. Excuse me, I sip my coffee. My third coffee of the day. Anyways, she comes in, and she talks to the guy behind the counter, and she's like, hello, that is not me. That is my twin sister. I am Naomi. Here's my driver's license, so I can, like, prove to you that I am a different person. 
please give me coffee ASAP. <coughs> and he instantly is like, oh, I'm sorry for instantly messing you up with your sister. Here's your coffee, ma'am. Um, he's really nice. Uh, they have a bit of a cute little banter where I they go, him. like, I'm in love with you. Please give me more coffee because he makes the best coffee she's ever had. And he's like, oh, sorry, Ernie Mary. She's like, no. Um, it's really funny. Really? Um, no, I so, love I, I forget his name, but I love him. I don't know if Knox owns the coffee shop, but he enters, and he starts going off at her, like, uh, how, get out of this place, I told you we would not serve you anymore, get out of here, you, you, um, starts calling her a lot of things, uh, th thinking she's Tina, um, uh, because he's not wearing his contacts, so we can't see her properly, um, so he's all, like, listing. The idea that Knox wears contacts is so weird to me, like, his know, right? eyes don't work. Try I'm surprised he didn't get LASIK. He, he kind of has a guy who would get LASIK, you know? Yeah. No, definitely, especially with all the money. Um, so, Knox uh, starts calling Tina a bunch of names and all this stuff. And it's in the middle of this coffee shop. And all these people just leave, right? Uh, because they see this drama going down. They're like, bye, peace. Um, so, this poor guy who runs this coffee shop is, like, looking at all these customers because of this. Um... And she goes to Knox, and she's like, listen, my dude, I've had a shitty day already, and you calling my sister a bunch of names, even though she's not the best person, is making it worse. I just want to drink my goddamn coffee. Let me live my goddamn life. And he's like, sister? And she's like, yeah, I'm her sister, not Tina. And he's like, you really think you can pull a fast one on me, Tina? And all this stuff starts calling more names. And she's like, seriously? Um, uh, she tells the guy, uh, the guy who behind the counter is all like, my dude, it is her sister. I saw the license, driver's license. There we go. Um, I, I, I know it's, I, uh, she's like, it's like, nah, I'm gonna handle this. I'm ready to go off on this tall white man. <laughs> Mood. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he, uh, eventually lets her kind of leave. He eventually recognizes that, wait a second, there's slight differences here. It's his sister. Um, and all this stuff. And so after she tells him off a bunch, um, she tells the guy who runs the shop, like, hey, I'll be back plenty of times if I stay in town, so I'll totally cover the charges of all these people leaving because this jackass decided to go off in the middle of this coffee shop for no reason. Leaves. Um, exits. He starts to be like, you know, I'm sorry, but, like, it's your fault. Kind of thing. I really did not like Knox at this point. I did not like that first either. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was like, why does everyone love Knox? What the fuck is happening? Um, and then she realizes her car is gone. And she's like, <laughs> what the fuck? So she thinks it's towed. And he's like, are you sure about that? And she's like, no, because I was supposed to be out here five minutes ago, but some idiot had me stuck in the coffee shop for five minutes drinking coffee, like, yelling at me. So now I gotta go find my car. So excuse me as I go to co the police station. And he's like, I'll, I'll give you a drive. Um, eventually, he does get her to agree to go into the car with him. <laughs> they go to the station, where his name's on the outside, and she's like, that's a little weird. Um, and then they go inside, she talks to whoever's on duty, they're like, hey, yeah, we haven't had any toes and all this stuff. Um, he's like, where are you staying? Uh, she tells him where, and he's like, I'll drive you. And she's like, no, I don't want to deal with a guy who's been jerk to me the ten minutes I've talked to him. I want to Real? drink my coffee, and, like, I've already had a shitty day. I don't want to deal with your shit, too. I just want to go back to my hotel room and uh, figure out where my car is and figure out what my sister called me here for. All this stuff. Gets, eventually, he gets her to agree to go into the car with him. Um, I think there's, like, a gripping the arm type thing, and she's like, bitch, please. Um, they get there, and I feel like at this point I'm going to pause and let you know something. At this point, we've already had our first Knox chapter. Yeah, oh, and no, I, yeah, I was like, oh, so open in his first chapter. I was like, oh, no. No, I had a different reaction because we both listened to the audiobook, right? I dual read it, but we both listened to the audiobook. I recognized their narrator's voice for Knox. So I looked it up on Amazon, right? At his catalog, one, one. Um... I know him from the Dirty Billionaire trilogy by Megan March, who voices the main character in that one, main male character, which is like the first um, adult romance series I ever read. Um, is that what the one you want me to read? <laughs> no, that's a different one. Okay, that's, good. <laughs> that's like the first adult, almost erotica type romance that I've read, I should say. 
the Christ Quotient is the one, the first, like, adult romance, but that it's, like, your typical, like, this type of book, almost. Normal. Um, yes. Not, like, full-on uh, spending th two and a half books trying to lead up to the point where they do butt stuff type books, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> Um, and then I also wrote down, um, at least when I was going through his catalog to see if it was the same guy, I found plenty of books for the Iraq episodes under his catalog. Um, oh my god. I wrote that down. Um, oh, and, oh god, I saw one of my notes. Anyways, um, uh, so, so, uh, he takes her to her- Hold on, no, I'm pretty sure, like, within the first few minutes, if not the first few seconds of Knox's first chapter, he's talking about his- I don't feel like saying that word today. You know what? And I was listening to this out loud, and I was like, oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, yeah, Knox is a character. Um, so... Uh, ba ba ba. So, they go to her hotel room, right? Um, and see that the door's open. She's like, ah, it's probably fine. He's like, dude, Stay back. I'll go check it out, right? Um, and he goes in, and, uh, not only has it been broken into, and, well, she goes to try to stop him from going in, because she realizes, uh, out in the open is her way to Um, and, uh, but when they get there, there's a little girl, and, um, uh, none of her shit. Uh, even, like, the money she hid is gone, and he's all like, where's your sister? What was her, your plan? And she was like, well, she was supposed to meet me at that coffee shop that she never showed up to. And he knows the girl. And so he's like, yeah, so basically your twin sister uh, stole your car uh, and all your items from your hotel room and left uh, her daughter uh, at your hotel room. And she's like, wait a second, I have a niece um, who is 11 and her name is Waylay. Um, and so that's all happening. Um, he's all like, do you have extra money or whatever? And she's like, no, I like, I was thought I was being smart by hiding extra money in my car. Which, like, <laughs> girl. Um, so, yeah, uh, like, she has no cell phone, no money, all this stuff, and he feels bad. Um, he calls up the police, uh, who happens to be his brother, um, <laughs> Nash, who also is flirting with her at this point. Um, he doesn't like the fact that men are flirting with her and all this stuff at this point. Um, so, uh, he talks to her, she tells him everything she knows, uh, and he informs her that technically Wele is under her care now, unless if she doesn't want to take care of her, then she can be, um, given to foster care and whatnot. And she's like, no, I'll take this kid, whatever. I'll figure out a plan. Um, she is very much a planner, I mean, like, which is, like, same. Um. I know it doesn't come up until later, but, like, low-key, from just what I know, I feel like Luz might be my favorite character. <laughs> Out of the three, I, I wonder what that says about me. So <laughs> we don't even have this book yet. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I know. Um, so so she's like, okay, I'll take care of this kid. I'll do all this stuff. Blah 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 blah. Um, the next plan is to uh take her to where Tina and where they live, um, which is this trailer, um. But there's an eviction notice on the outside, uh, and so he goes and talks to, like, the owner, uh, while she checks out stuff around the place, um, uh, notices that's kind of a mess, all this stuff, um, like, instead of curtains, they just have bed sheets hanging up and stuff like that, um, he's like, hey, wait, like, grab all your shit, we're going out, um, and she's like, what the fuck is the plan, and he's like, listen, I know this cottage, um, I know the lady who owns the cottage, so, like, you can stay there for a bit, um, basically Wayle brings out two trash bags full of stuff and that's her stuff um they've made a plan uh, he's like made a plan with the owner um she's all like what if there's like important stuff like birth certificates and whatnot in there and he's like don't worry he uh the owner tends to do this thing where he puts that stuff to his side um anything important to the side so like if you come back he can give it to you and whatnot type thing and he knows that Tina's run off um so yeah that's happening uh and he takes her to the cottage um Eventually, she does get a job without without Knox knowing. He, she does get a job as a part-time server at the bar. Um, and that's kind of important later on. Um, but they go to the cottage. Uh, he's all like, cool. Uh, dinner is at this time. We're going to meet. Uh, you're going to meet the owner of this property. Blah, blah, blah. Bye. Um, she's like, sure, whatever. I think uh, she but the lady was like, you have a job now at this place at this time. Her, I love her. Yeah. Um, her name. 
Mm -hmm. I don't remember her name either. I don't remember her name. There's so many characters. There really are. Um, so, they, uh, the way I'm doing this from memory, uh, okay, so, they, she goes to take a nap because it's been a stressful day, um, and she hasn't had much coffee, uh, Wele is like, hello, I would like Pop-Tarts. <laughs> so they make like a shopping mm -hmm. list. Um, they have bikes to ride to town to get food and whatnot and all this stuff. Um, and uh, she like puts on something slightly nicer to go to this dinner with the person who owns the cottage, um, who happens to be- Okay, okay, you, you skipped over something it's really funny to me. Uh, when at the grocery store, everyone's like, mm, cause she, they're like, Tina, like it's not Tina. She's like, I'm not Tina. <laughs> And she's talking to the lady at the deli counter, and she's like, I'm not Tina. Blah, 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 blah. I love that part. Yeah, and now she has the big name, not Tina. Yeah. Um, so he, so she goes to this inner thing with Wele. Um, Nash is there, the cop, as well as Knox. Because, well, they start fighting outside on the front lawn. And she's like, please, for the love of God, this is a bad influence on this child. Um, they're kind of fighting over the fact, over stuff in the past, but also how they both kind of, like, Naomi, right? Um, they go, like, they're having a little bit of full day, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Um, they go inside. Uh, it turns out the woman who owns this cottage is Dox and Nash's grandmother. Um, and she's like, yeah, it's fine, whatever, you can stay here, uh, I don't really care about rent or whatever. Um, I wouldn't mind for, instead of rent, you help me clean up this place, uh, the main house, uh, because it hasn't been cleaned up for a while. And she was, like, having the urge to clean already. She's giving me low-key OCD vibes, um, as someone who's the same way. And so she was, like, ready to go to town and all this stuff. Um, they have a nice dinner, blah, blah, blah. She says she's got a job, and the grandma is all, like, I forget her name, so I'm just gonna call her the grandma, um, uh, is all, like... I think when she tells her the location, she says, don't tell Knox, and then she's like, well, if you work the night shift, I can watch, watch Wele, uh, and basically be your babysitter, and she's like, well, I, I want to pay you for it, and whatnot, and she's like, no, it's not necessary, I'd like to actually have people here, um, so it's nice to, like, actually talk to people, and whatnot, um, very sweet older lady who, like, wants to just have people to talk to type thing, um, there's also, like, she has a dog, and Knox has a dog, and there's a lot of dog content throughout this book. It's great. 10 out of 10. Um, so, uh, the next day, Knox is, I almost said bartender? What? Barber. Um, he owns a salon, but he also owns the bar that Naomi works at. So, when he shows up, and he's, like, going in to check everything out, um, the woman who hired her, who's in charge of hiring, is like, this is our new, uh, waitress and he's all like no 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 and she like used to work in communications or something um so she hasn't really waitress yet but like she's pretty good at it already and he's all like if you mess up one goddamn time i will fire you and all this stuff he's being really rude to her for no freaking reason um and she's like okay and so she takes like a bunch of guys orders a bunch of sleazy guys orders right he like purposely sends her to a table full of sleazy men who will hit on her and try to slap her ass right and she handles it like a fucking pro, takes them their order, and doesn't even write it down because she's so good she memorizes it, right? On the spot. Um, and all this stuff. And he's all like, why did you, like, handle it? And she's like, no, you sent me over there to trip me up and make me get fired so I don't have a job so I can't take care of my niece. Which is a shitty thing to do in and of itself, but then you try to, like, like, they could actually slap my ass and, like, sexually assault and you just let it happen? Uh, you throw them out afterwards, but, like, that's only after the fact. Like, all the shitty shit he's doing, I still don't like Knox at this point. Um, but no, I handle it on my own. And then you get upset that I handle it on my own? No, 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 no. Um, she tells him off. The other ladies who work there are just like, yes, girl, thriving. Um, they actually got upset when he sent her over there. Uh, so that's great. Um, she doesn't mess up, uh, at all. She's really good. And then she's like, okay, cool, I did my job, I did so good that, uh, you can't fire me, uh, based off of the terms, so I quit. Bye, bitch. <laughs> Which made me laugh so hard. Okay, so fucking hard. Um. Real. And then, uh, he's like, no, it's fine, continue working here, it's whatever, we did such a good job. Um, apparently they do this thing where if they do a good job, um, and beat, like, the previous day's tips or something, they all get shots. 
and he actually takes shots with him type thing. Uh, and then he drives her home because he doesn't feel good letting her bike home in the dark, right? Makes sense. Uh, so he drives her home. Um, he's also kind of her neighbor, like, across the street. That's also a thing. Um, because, like, at one point he goes to pee outside, not recognizing that there's a woman who lives across the street. And so she's outside drinking her coffee first thing in the morning, just having a good day. And then she just sees this man peeing. You know? Yeah, I would kill myself. Show me out. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's happening, uh, I don't remember the exact order of things, I'm gonna skim this sum summary. Uh, oh yeah, so, uh, we learned that he got, he got money to, like, own these two property, like, all his property and all this stuff, um, because he won the state lottery two years earlier, um, somehow it created a rift between Knox and Nash. Later on, you learn, uh, he basically, uh, tried to give Nash money, um, because he likes to take care of people, it's his whole thing, um, and Nash didn't appreciate it, so he took the money and then used it to build the new police station, um, which Knox didn't like because the police were always, like, bugging them as kids, um, so he's like, how dare you go to the other side type thing, uh, and so... He... Hear me out. I would also not like to be named. I would not like to have a police station named after me. Hear me out. I know, right? Like, that's a little weird. Of all the things you could have named after you. Um. So, so, Knox, so she's all like, I don't know why you have a problem with me. And at one point, Knox says that, like, she's uptight and needy and all this stuff, but, like, he likes her in the skirt and all this stuff. So, like, he's clearly into her, but he doesn't like the fact that she's, like, quote-unquote a romantic, so she's a lot of work and all this stuff. Um, and she's not into wanting a relationship either, because she just ran out of her goddamn wedding. She, like, she does not need a relationship right now. Um, so... Hold it. Hold it, because you just mentioned the wedding again. Uh, she has daisies in her hair for the wedding, so mm -hmm. she has daisies in her hair when she meets Knox. So immediately, Knox starts to call her starts starts to call her Days, and and there's daisies on the cover, and I just ah! you know yeah that part I did like that part. Um, also a thing throughout this book, CPS, uh, Child Protective Services. For obvious reasons, uh, she is currently the legal guardian of her needs, and they gotta make sure that it's a safe place to be, um, or else. Um, and so she is being this legal guardian, and basically it's understood by everyone else that it's gonna be fine. Uh, she's clearly a better option over Tina and all this stuff, and they'd rather keep her with family, so it makes sense. Uh, they will accept her as her legal guardian after the period, right? Uh, wait period? Um, test period? I don't know what the terminology is. Uh, but she's, like, constantly worried about it, um, making bad impressions on the CPS people and all this stuff. And it's, like, a current thing throughout the book that, like, this is a thing that they're going through and, like, how they're going to become, like, she's going to become the legal guardian, uh, basically adoptive mother of Waylay and how all this is going to work out and all that stuff. And how she wants to become the legal guardian of this kid despite the fact that it was never part of her plan and all this. Like, it's a constant throughout this whole entire book, which I kind of like. Like, it's something extra there that wasn't needed, but it was nice. Um, eventually, uh, she starts going to the library. Uh, she learns that Waylay has, like, a community at the library. Like, no one really likes her, um, because of her mom. But she has this way at the library where the library... Real. Like, yeah, the librarian lets her, um, take out extra books and have a good time there, um, because she, uh, basically works there for free to, uh, deal with, um, computer and technology issues and stuff like that, um, which she really likes. She likes that Waylay has a place to go and stuff like that, uh, and she'd like to work at the library, uh, and she learns at one point that she could get a part-time job there if a grant goes through. Cop cost Knox actually pays for the grant to go through so that she can get the job, um, uh, and it's never brought up, like but she doesn't work know it. Everybody. She never knows this happened. She never knows he's the one that paid for it. So now she's got two part-time jobs, right? Um, so all this is happening. She's finding a, her way in the community, I um, mean, the small town. Like, uh, the way she smiles, she, uh, is nice to everyone, all this stuff. Um, people generally like her a lot. Um, there is a illegal poker game, quote-unquote, in the back. Still being called Not Tina as well. Yes, there's an illegal poker game in the back um, of the bar that she ends up waitressing for uh, because really good tips. And um, 
he gets really mad that she's working it. And she's like, nah, they put me in here because I need the tips. They know it. So I'm doing it. Um, might as well. Um, she's being really friendly with the guys there. Um, and they like her. Um, they teach her. <laughs> he gets really angry and tries to tell her off and then comes back after like an hour or two or something. And she's like just in there playing the game with them. And they're teaching her how to play poker. And they low key let her win, but also let her keep the money she wins. Um, and she's like, oh, guys, and it's, like, just a really sweet moment that shows, like, she is, um, being a part of this community, and, um, people really like her. Um, is this around the time? Also, this is where we meet Lucia. Yes. Um. Okay, yes, okay. Um, uh, yes, Lucian shows up, which is, of the trio of Nox and Nash as kids, he was the third member. Um, he is now, like, a rich guy who does stuff in business and wears business suits and but also still beat people up when he can <laughs> um very scary businessman who can yes. get anything and everything done hello and your name is Lucian hello uh so throughout all this there's friction between Nash and Knox because they both kind of like her um right and the tension uh kind of comes to a halt because um Nash gets shot twice during a traffic stop. I, what did I write during this? Uh, I wrote, if Felix, um, this has to do with, uh, Tina or Naomi's ex, which I was right. Um, there's, like, four theories I had, um, that I, three of which I got right. I would also like to know, um, some of my other notes before this. Um, this is more erotic than Dino said, and all we got so far is, um, his thoughts about her and how he wakes up with boners thinking of her all the time. Um, the chaos. I would of- like to mention the fact that I had no idea what was going to happen, what was going on. I had no idea that any of the twists and turns were coming. I was just there and it was happening. And I was like, oh my god! <laughs> and then. <laughs> the chaos is not. I was thriving off the chaos. Uh, it was a good time. Um,. So, uh, he gets shot, uh, Knox goes to the hospital to take care of him and see what's going on, um, all this stuff, and Naomi, uh, is at work, so he gave Naomi his truck so that she could, um, get home, because he tends to drive her home after work, uh, and I'm assuming when the officers drove her, drove him to the hospital, right, um, and so she ends up showing up after her shift, um, and she's all like, hello, I am here. And he's like, you're supposed to call home. And she's like, yeah, I will, but I want to make sure everything's okay. I'm here to take care of you, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, uh, that's weird. <laughs> you know? Um, so that happens. Uh, and then, so Naomi is, uh, worried on where her sister is. Um, at this point, she doesn't have a cell phone, so is this the... No, they must have gone to the mall already where he got, um waylay a bunch of clothes and whatnot new clothes for school um got her a cell phone like a proper cell phone to like actually talk to people um right uh i think her best friend has showed up at this point too to be like hello i am here to help take care of you uh we you know, the best, typical friend. Gay best so friend yeah the gay best friend um all this stuff uh and uh also buys her sexy underwear which she does yeah, wear. Why? She goes to Victoria's Secret and he just follows her and then he just picks out like five pairs of six underwear. He's like, okay, put it on my card. You know, I want a man to take me to the mall and just put things on my card. Except malls aren't not really a thing anymore. I would like a man to take me onto um, the Barnes & Noble website and <laughs> pay for it. <laughs> you know? I would not like a man to do anything. <laughs> oh. I mean, I guess I need my father to buy me new glasses, apparently. God damn. Um, so, uh... And I need this other man to text me back! I am sick. Anyway. Yes. Um, so, he... he's Not the personal lore again. I'm sick. (laughs) Um, he's been taking care of her, uh, like, buying her things that she needs. Um, like, because she needs a phone to take care of... She has, like, a little kid she's taking care of. She needs a phone. Right? Um, 
buys Waylay uh the shoes she's always wanted so she can like be the cute girl she wants. Um, makes it so they can get haircuts uh that they want. Uh, so she cuts her hair most of her hair off and she loves it. Um, we learn this whole story about how Tina uh purposely cut Waylay's hair because uh she didn't like how Waylay uh said something to her. Uh, so she got upset. And was like you're be you think you're better than me and then just cut off all her hair. It was like there. You like your hair? You like to be a pretty girl? Well, guess what? Not anymore. Um, uh, so, you know, good times. Um, uh, <laughs> good times. But, yeah, uh, this is where we really start seeing, uh, more act, like, throughout, um, it happens, but, like, yeah, um, other than, like, the very beginning, really seeing Nox take care of her, which is, like, a thing, because she's very much the type of person to take care of everyone else before her, so finding someone who will take care of her, um, you know, in my vlog, I mentioned this is why I think they would work out as, like, a couple, because his love language is, uh, actions, um, to take care of the other, and that's what she needs. So, you know, uh, love that. So, um, she's, like, been messaging her parents who are supposed to be on this cruise to be like, hey, I'm alive, um, and so eventually, uh, she doesn't know where her sister is, so she eventually messaged her parents, and she, she's like, ah, uh, so guess what, this is all what's happening, um, you have a sacred granddaughter, all this stuff, Tina stole all my crap, I'm just living this town. Um, and then, and then her and Nox bang. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they bang. Um, I think it's in the middle of a school day. Um, but then, but then, uh, there's a knock on the door, and she... And she's not sure who it is. And she goes down. Um, and who is it? It's her parents coming in. Uh, right, post, like, right after the fact. Like, right after the fact. Um, and she's trying to herd them so, like, they don't see him. But he comes downstairs in his underwear. And her mom's all like, hell yeah. And her dad's like, I'm but, a little suspicious. But also, but also, uh, their clothes were all in the floor, So she would try to, like, hide their clothes everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So, uh, her mom's like, well, clearly this is why she left the wedding. Because she found someone better. Uh, cause no one liked the fiance, um, cause they do not know the real reason why, cough, cough abuse, I got the hints of that very early on, um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's very obvious, so she starts warming up to Knox, uh, Knox basically starts this fake dating thing where she's all like, oh yes, we are together, happy, um, I don't know why he does it, just so that he can be close to her, I guess, I don't know, but I would like you to know that, uh, my next note, uh, I didn't, like Knox, but after they bang and it becomes fake dating, I started to enjoy his character more. Real. He just needs to. We pump both one love out. fake dating Listen, so much. He, he stated it himself that he hadn't uh, done it in a while, so I think he just needed to pump one out, and then, you know, I liked his character after that. I'm sick. No, I think it also helps that we both like love fake dating so much. That is also true. Um, no, the this episode is not clean. Spotify, thank you for noticing. Um, Maybe I will stop watching Reels while we uh, record episodes, because I just saw someone do something to this chicken, and I never want to see that again. I'm scared for you. It was one reel. I just go to watch one reel. Anyways. I'm sick. Um... So, yeah, basically, they start this fake dating thing. Uh, her parents are there now to help take care of Wele. Um, Wele's doing sports. Uh, she's on the soccer team. Um, and she's doing good. She's making friends. Um, all this stuff is happening. There's, like, five different barbecue scenes. It's not important. <laughs> um, Stop being a barbecue scene hater. Thank you very much. I love the barbecue scenes. Stop being a barbecue scene okay. hater. Listen. Especially the one in the one barbecue where they're, like, Everybody's on the deck, and they're below, and Knox is like, hey! Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they always like, they're literally right there! What the hell is wrong with you? Um. So, oh my god, the way the synopsis just skipped to when her fiancé shows up. I'm sick. <laughs> um, so there's also been a bunch of break-ins and robberies going on. Um, I had a theory it had to do with Tina. I was right. Um, I also had a theory that Naomi's ex would show up and Knox would punch me in the face. Um, or I hoped that he would punch me in the face. I was right and I got what I wanted. <laughs> um, I also... Same. I also wanted that so much. And then it happened. I was like, yes! Uh, I also, uh, assumed that something would happen where Naomi would feel like she's repeating history falling for, uh, rich white guy 
who is technically her boss. Um, again, uh, but that never happened. Um, she recognized that they are different people pretty early on. Um, so, like, that never happened. And I'm kind of happy, uh, with that. So, uh, a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff, like, uh, her taking care of Wele, him helping her take care of Wele, uh, and taking care of her for her, um, all this stuff. Uh, so, um, eventually, Naomi's ex-fiancé does show up. Um, at the bar, uh, and demands Naomi return to New York with him, uh, stating that her escapade is over. Um, like, it's, like, actually, like, she tries to pull him to the side so, like, she, he's not making a scene in the middle of her place of work, right? Um, and he starts, like, gripping onto her heart and blocking her in and all this stuff, and she, like, mentally, because, like, at this point there's been, like, five sex scenes, and she mentally recognizes that Knox has done the same thing. I think even at the point at the barbecue you were talking about, um, he does the same thing where he blocks her in. But, like, with Knox, she knew she was safe, and, uh, she felt the affection from it and whatnot. Um, and then she, like, feels like her brain's going danger, danger, danger of all this stuff. So she's trying what to- What if I- What if I cry? <laughs> what if I lose my mind, you know? Yeah. Um, so, uh, she- she- wants to get away from him, but he's not letting her go, um, and all this stuff, and she's like, please, let me go, he's all like, listen, I miss you doing my laundry for me, because that's what he misses most out of this, um, it's also hinted at. Uh, can we talk about the way I rhyme when I'm, like, did you notice that I just rhymed yeah. when I said yes. that? Like, yes, I why do I rhyme saying. when I'm like this? Um, anyways, but yeah, you're right, he's just, he, he needs, um, his mother, and she's not that, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, so, uh, it's, it's like before it's hinted at around the first time they have sex, uh, her and Knox, that uh, when she was with the ex, I don't remember his name. When she was with him, um, he would get. Is impatient. it Warren? I feel like it's Warren. I feel like it's Warren too. Um, he would get impatient and like make her handle it herself and stuff like that. I'm like, girl, all the red flags. Um, the way she's the the way he's the son of her boss and like the only reason he has a job there is because he's the boss's son um right and all this stuff nepotism yeah no it's giving me um icky vibes um the way she would like do everything and take care of him um and the reason he wants her back is because of um he doesn't have that anymore right so he's trying to restrain her um and then Knox enters and before when he first showed up she was like oh, i'm glad Knox is not here for this and then he starts restraining her she's like shit i want Knox to be here um, so, Knox comes in, um, and it's like, you know what, pulls him off her, and he's like, I will give you one free shot, and they're, like, in the middle of this bar, and so everyone sees him let this man punch him in the face, and then he fucking bodies him, breaks his nose, it's a good time, I was so excited, I was partying. Yes, yes, and then Luz, Luz wants to take him out back, and they're like, Whoa! But, like, Nash is there, too, and he's like, well, <laughs> he's literally the fucking police chief or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They can, get, they, can get, they can do it. No one would say a thing in that town. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also, when Lush takes him out back, uh, up the back door, he lets him whack his face in the glass window in the door, so you just see his Real. from his broken nose. Yeah. Yep. I love that part. Um, so... Uh, because of, so, so he takes Naomi, he's like, so she freaks out, she's like, ah, shit, this shit just happened, so she runs to the bathroom, um, and all of the girls go in after her, and she's like, okay, it's okay to be hard, blah, blah, blah. and he's like, you don't realize, I'm your guys' boss, get the fuck out there, start working, um, but then, but then, is it Luce who starts, I don't know, someone starts working at the bar, one of the guys starts working at the bar, and he's like, okay, I only know how to pour shots and beer, so, like, that's what everyone's having, and it's just a good scene of, like, all the guys taking care of it so that everyone else can take care of her, um, right, and eventually she exits. Isn't it, isn't it that one biker dude or something? Something, yeah, I think so, um, and, like, the person you least expect to do it, right, um, and so he, eventually she leaves, I don't know how he gets her to leave, but he gets her to leave, um, and so she exits the bathroom, and he takes her into his office, and he's like, okay, now, we're gonna sit here quietly, and you're gonna tell me what the fuck is up with this guy, um, why you left him, all this stuff, um, and she's like, well, fine, but you can't get angry, and you can't go beat him up again, and he's like, uh, fine, eventually he agrees to that. 
not the dogs barking. I'm sick. Um, this is where we learn that, uh, he has, was abusive a total of two times. I think the first time he was, like, really drunk, um, and didn't like a comment she made to, like, friends or something. Um, and, like, she says it was nothing serious, but, like, he, he slapped her a few times and pushed her around a few times, right? Uh, that was it. Uh, and she's like, that's it. And he's like, yeah, but that's still something and it should be nothing, right? Like, he's on the side of, like, excuse me, um, I don't care if it, it's, and I quote, that's it, but, um, that's, it, it's something. Therefore, no, I'm gonna beat this guy's facing, um, thank you very much. Um, and she's like, no, no, no. He's so real. Yeah. He's so real. Um, but the reason why she eventually, like, she, he slapped her, like, the day before, um, uh, their <sighs> rehearsal dinner, right, for the wedding. Um, and then they go to the rehearsal dinner, right, and his mom starts making comments, like, really mean comments about her. And it was like, for some reason, that was the last straw. Um, and so she went to the bathroom, and then she climbed out the window. That's when she climbed out the church window. Um, and I would stuff. also climb out a church window, just to let everybody know. I don't know. Um, and the whole entire reason why she finally did is because she got the call from Tina saying that she needed help. And so Knox like, the only reason I've ever liked Tina is for that one phone call that she didn't even plan. Like, it was accidental. Um, so, they make her closer. Um, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he goes down. And then she gives him a blowy. Um. Uh. Eventually, at one point, they they go. Why'd you say it like that? <laughs> Shut up. Um. Eventually, they go volunteer at like a shelter or something. Um. And she sees like there's some guy that introduced himself to her, and she's like, "Oh, hello." And she he talks to Knox. He's like, "Oh, I see you got a woman and all this stuff." And then she sees him, sees Knox give that guy money, and she's like, "That's a little suspicious." Eventually, uh, we learn. Um, that his mother died that, uh, when he was really young, and instead of, like, taking care of his kids, uh, their father really got into, um, drug and alcohol, um, to, like, drown his sorrows and whatnot, um, to the point where, like, he's had to go to rehab multiple times, all this stuff, and he tries to, like, give him money to, like, make sure that he's safe and whatnot, um, uh, but he, like, basically abandoned his two kids after his wife died so uh his grandma and grandfather took care of them and all this stuff um and the rift between him and nash is because of the whole money thing and at which point she's like dude that's the fucking dumbest thing i've ever heard who fucking cares he almost died deal with it <laughs> and so he goes to nash and he's like hey this is what she said and he's like god she's smarter than both of us and then they make up um so, eventually, uh, he decides he can't commit because he's, she's too good for him. Right before this scene, right fucking before this scene, she's all like, I've never been good enough for anyone. And then he goes, hey, I'm breaking up with you. <laughs> In a public place, so that she'd quote unquote I would, scene. I would like everybody to know that I was listening to this and pacing around the house and just screaming at the top of my lungs because he was kind of planning it for a bit, right, right, right? And I was screaming at, my, at the top of my lungs in the chapter of his before when he was thinking about it and planning it. And then during that chapter the whole time, what the fuck are you doing, Knox? Be so serious, Knox. What is, like, Knox, Knox, et cetera, et cetera. I was just screaming at the top of my lungs, just pacing through the fucking house because, like, what the fuck was he doing? Be so serious. <laughs> Yes. Um, yeah, so that happens. Um, yeah, no, so he, like, breaks up with her in a public place so that she can't get upset, and she recognizes that that's what he's doing, and she's like, dude, one, the way that you can't trust me to the point where I wouldn't make a scene and you had to do it like this, be so serious. Um, two, two, um, I, I, like, she makes a comment about how she's never good enough for anyone, and he's like, no, babe, and she's like, no, 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 um, and eventually she does recognize it's because it's not, like, a her issue, even though she does feel like she's never good enough for anyone, it's more of a, like, he doesn't feel like he deserves her love, um, despite the fact that right before this, also, she was thinking about how she loves him, uh, so did he, though, while he was in deep, in deep, <laughs> I tell you, in deep. Hi, Rose. Bye, Rose. Please. Hi, Stu. Bye, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> He's so real for that, you know? Yeah. Um. So, uh, of course, he has to break up with her. Stu, not Knox. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, no, I'm keeping that in. Um, uh, uh, but, yeah, no, he, he, he 
recognizes he doesn't recognize that he recognizes that he's in love with her but he like thinks that he loves her he's just like oh i love this woman and then he's like i gotta break up with her i was like god damn it um so uh and then he tries to give her money to take care of her because that's what he does he takes care of people and she's like bitch i'm not taking your fucking money get the fuck out of here um she stops talking to him regularly um, real she plans to save up enough money to get a car and then quit this job at the bar so that she can work at just the library um maybe at some point move out of the cottage because it's like one across from his house two on his grandmother's property everyone in the town including his grandmother and brother are like bitch what the fuck did you do um everyone's calling him out on it it's hilarious um she hosts another barbecue let's go and invites everyone but him and then he eventually just shows up on his own, and he gets really upset because Nash and her are talking, and he's like, oh, I already, I see you're, like, picking up on my seconds, and, like, all this stuff, and basically, um, calling her slut, and she's like, bitch, the fuck? Um, Wele, uh, feels like she also is never enough for people, uh, her and Naomi are very similar like that, and so Naomi's like, no, it's not because of us, it's because of him. Um, and all this stuff, uh, that I was also screaming, crying, throwing up during that whole barbecue, like, yeah. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. Um, so, Wayley, uh, eventually, I think at the barbecue, um, is like, hey, so, you're a jerk, um, you make my aunt upset, and I don't like it, and we may not be good enough for you, but you're not good enough for us, and a bunch of stuff like that, and then takes his dog, <laughs> and the dog just happily leaves, <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck? Wayley is so real, and so is Wayland. They're so real, you know? Yes. Um. So, eventually, um... Don't you love my valuable commentary? Yes. Uh, so, diner scene, um, I'm pretty sure they have, like, a conversation or something, uh, and they have a fight where she's, like, ready to quit. She's like, listen, I'm saving my money, and then I'm gonna quit. And he's like, no, no, no. And she's like, no, I'm gonna quit. And he's all like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, no, like, it's your fault. You're the one that broke up with me. This is the way it's gotta be. Like, calm the fuck down. Um, and then everyone hears them, like, fighting. And then she goes outside, and there's car headlights. And who is it? Tina. Um, and she, uh, is like, hey, we have to go find a Waylay. He took Waylay. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Comes to the car, and then she handcuffs her with, um, sexy handcuffs. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Okay, but the real question is, what color were they? Pink. Pink, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Valuable so, information. Yes. Um. So, that's happening. Um, Knox, everyone else, Knox just stays in his office. And so, everyone else is like, hey, what did you do? Because, like, she hasn't come back yet. Um, so, the fuck? Um, and he's like, what are you talking about? Like, we, it wasn't like they ended on angry terms or anything. It was just like, it's done, whatever. Um, and so it's like, what, what are you talking about? Uh, and then someone's like, yeah, I saw her get in a car, and he's like, I'm sorry, what? So, like, he's getting security camera set up, he's calling his brother, who's the sheriff, he's doing it all this It was the stuff. chef. Yes, he was, the chef saw her. Um, so he's calling the sheriff, getting security cameras so they can figure out who it was, all this stuff. Um, and at this point we learn that, uh, Tina has kidnapped Wayley, um, and locked her up with her boy toy, who is the son of, like, a mafia guy, right? Um, and Tina had... Uh, some secret information he had stolen from his father before he went out on his own. And Wiley, uh, after the whole thing where her mom cut her hair against her will, um, stole the information because her mom, like, loses things easily. So she's like, haha, it's fine now. And hit it, right? So they want the information from Wiley. And the best way to do that is for them to threaten Naomi. Um, he's, like, pointing guns at people. Um, saying a lot of sexual things about Tina. Uh, they try to do the thing where they switch places, but he instantly tells them apart because of their boobs. Quality content. Um, Wiley tells him where it is, but tells him the long, wrong location so he can go after it, but, like, um... The urge to make a joke about how I would instantly notice the difference between women because of their <laughs> Yes. Um, you know, he's like, oh, uh, well, Tina's are, mis are, like, different shapes or something, different sizes or something like that. Uh, so, uh, he goes off to get it. I think there's, like, some other guys there. There's a shootout. Uh, Nock shows up. Uh, I think she, like, almost passes out at one point. She's protecting Wele, blah, 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 blah. Um, and, but, 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 he shows up, um, he's all like, I love you, marry me! And she's like, okay! <laughs> um, they leave after the uh, police show up, and, uh, they, 
Wele tells him and Nash that what he's after is this USB drive that she has hidden in a location. Uh, she can tell them where it is, but also um, where he's going to get it. But also she put it up on like a secure server or something like that. So she can just show it to them right now. And it's a list of people's names, including Nash's, of um, police officers that they want to go after, that the government, that the people want to go after, right? Um, so that's why Nash was shot, because he he was on the list. Right? Um, Can we mention the fact that Wele is actually so fucking smart and, like, the USB was literally, like, this cute little charm that she put on her shoe? Yes. Um, like, why is this, what, 11, 12-year-old smarter than me? Like, I need her to be so serious. So, uh, basically, Tina ends up facing prison time. Uh, she does get off sometime because uh, she... Uh, goes on the stand against her boyfriend. I think they eventually, because like Wiley knew exactly where he was gonna be, so they're like, she was like, he's this area in the library. So they go after him, get him, all this stuff. And so, um, but like he's got a rich mafia boss dad, uh, so they use Tina's testimony to uh, get him in jail, and she gets less time. But because she's in jail, uh, there's not gonna be a familial countering the adoption of Wele for Naomi so she can adopt her if she wants so she goes through with it um and basically adopts Wele um and then there's a uh there's a thing what is it um the, the, the epilogue where um basically uh it's like a birthday party for Wele and he asked her what she wanted and she listed off all these things including two cakes uh and so he got her everything she wanted for her birthday um and then at the birthday party, he proposes to Naomi, and she says yes. Um, and then there's a second epilogue. You will never know if Please. I read it. You will never know. Please I was the right the kidnapping of my dogs. You will never know. Please tell me if you did or did not read it. I need to know. Like, I need you to be 100% serious with me right now. You will never know. Please. You will never know. It, it leads me to believe you did read it. Um, reading the synopsis right now, because uh, it has it in here. Um... Oddly enough, the ebook I was reading didn't have it, but the audiobook did. You, mm. I forgot that it was a thing until the audiobook started to play. I was like, what the fuck? And then right when it started to play, you were like, don't listen to it. And then sent me that Taylor Swift with a gun meme. Um, did it work, though? Did the Taylor Swift gun meme work? Uh, you'll never know. Uh, so, five years later... I hate you. I, why summary, are you like this? Uh, I'm reading the summary right now. Uh... So, Wele is heading off to college on a soccer scholarship. Uh, Knox has reconciled with his father, now three years sober. Uh, they are unable to have kids of their own. Uh, they have adopted two girls, a uh, three-year-old and baby. Um, and they prepare with the help of their friends and family for hectic years ahead, full of love. Oh, yeah, that's, like, also a thing. Um, the grandmother, his grandmother, moves into the cottage that she's in, um, her parents get, I think, Knox's cottage, and then the three of them move into the bigger place, right? I think that's the thing that happens also. Yes, that is the thing that happens. Um, and that's the synopsis, or summary. Um, I would like you to note that this hits all the beats of, uh, just sex turns to feelings turns. He doesn't feel worthy of her love to break up. Two, his heart was broken for some reason. Two, she's in danger. Two, he recognizes he does love her. Two, grand dresser to show commitment, aka the sudden proposal right there. Um, which is like fine. I don't mind that that happened. I, I, I mean, it works for a reason. My issue is why is it so goddamn fucking long? Why is it so goddamn fucking long? It's over five hundred pages. Why? Why? Just literally why? I enjoyed that it was long, personally myself. I did not I because like I had so stuff. many long books on my DVR this month. But I think it's because I really like character-based stuff, and it is very yeah, character-based, and you're like, yeah, what? Yeah. For whatever reason, I don't know why plot has to matter, obviously. Um, yeah, no, I recognize that, that you like character-based stuff, and I like more plot-based stuff. So finding a book that we both would enjoy is very difficult. Can you explain to me why you like plot-based stuff more, actually? I feel like that's a really interesting question. I don't know. I, I th It's been a thing for, like, until the past, like, two years where I just did not care much about characters. I didn't care one way or the other. I liked more of the plot stuff. I liked the lore. I liked the world building. All that type of stuff. Um, 
And so until recently, I didn't start like going into uh, characters of books. In like when I reread Akatar last year, the first one, when I read it, I went into more of like a character study viewpoint uh, than a plot viewpoint, and I liked it more that way. Like it, it I have to read it I don't know for some reason my brain feels like it has to read in a different way in order to read a character based way or something like that but um yeah <laughs> does any of that make sense no. no I think personally the reason I obviously I would prefer character based stories is because I like knowing how people experience things and people's feelings and yeah. people's thoughts you know yeah, I get that vibe from you I don't really care about that I haven't cared about that until like the past year or two um which is why getting you to like fantasy is gonna be difficult yeah because respectfully fuck world building none of that shit makes any sense <laughs> yeah no I think you may like the Brandon Sanderson's I've read because they are like split between plot and character driven um like, there's a lot of world-building and plot stuff, but all of the stuff that happens is based off of the characters, and the characters' thoughts and decisions and all this stuff. Um, and so I think you made like, those. I don't know. Which is why I wanted to do a I'm fantasy not romance. reading a Brandon Sanderson. I hate to break this to you. I won't force you. Don't worry. Um, but, but also, I imagine if you did get me to read, like, a fantasy like that, though, you would literally have to explain it to me afterwards. <laughs> yes. Well, this is why I want to get you to read Iron Widow, because Iron Widow, while being a sci-fi fantasy book, Thruple! Yes, Thruple, but also, it is very character-based. Okay, it is very much her character, um, being the head of the whole entire book. Um, and, I mean, it's kind of the point, because they wrote it to be, like, a retelling of the first, uh, female emperor, leader of China. Um, so, like, it makes sense that that would happen, right? Um, the way that, when they went to sell this book to publishers... Iron Widow, and they were like, hey, retelling of, uh, first female leader of China, but mech suits, and they were like, uh, we'll only give you $15,000. Like, I'm sorry, that's a fucking genius idea. Fight, fight people for them. <laughs> we'll fight people for them. I want Iron Widow too, but it's pushing I, back. I need publishers to be so serious, you know? Like, no, this is why they, they, uh, why Iron Widow 2 is pushed back, because they are writing another series that's more YA. Like, I think Iron Widow is, like, 16 to 18 level YA, but this one's, like, more middle grade to younger YA, right? Um, and I think it's, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! retelling or something like that. And it's more popular. Well, it's not even more popular, because Iron Widow is really popular. Like, it was top of list and whatnot. But, like, she got, or they got more money for it. So, that's why it, it, it's worse, because they need the money. They're like, I need the to pay bills so the one that's i get more money for i'm gonna write right um and there's so room for talking about that though because no one talks like, about yeah, that's that. the way it's gonna be like they're like i wish i could do it however i want but like bills are a thing like to the it got to the point i don't know if you watched the full because there were two videos about i it. watched i watched both of them yeah where um after they got uh i'm little published and their parents were like see this isn't a proper career path because it didn't sell for a lot of money and i'm just sitting here like bitch you all fight because that's like i love that book that's like one of the few books that rated five stars um anyways future day i will make you read it middle and we'll do it for a podcast episode i'm very excited to read it i love how i'm, I'm so, so enthusiastic about the thruple factory even though i've never read anything with a thruple in it and i i don't, I don't know why i'm so like you know about it i I get why. Listen, that was the only book so far that I've read with a thruple, and I had a good ass time. I think I've read twenty six or twenty five books that I rated five stars, and that was the second most recent. Because I read it in obviously November. the majority of the books I've read have been five stars because I have issues in my head. Yes, I have. I remember it was twenty five, but I upped, I upped uh, Addie Larue to five stars um in january so now it's at 26 right uh but respectfully that seems like such a you book every time you mention it, i'm like that's so you i think you might like addy larue too because like it's light fantasy and it's very character based um so you know personally i do not think i will i mean i don't know it's really up to a person's taste i really love the writing in it too that's like a big thing for me in that one um 
but yeah. Iron Widow was the 24th book I ever rated 5 stars. <laughs> I'd like you to remind you that uh, Neon Gods by Katie Robert was 25th. Should I count my 5 stars to see what my 24th was? I believe you. Mine's easy. I just gotta go down the list easily. <laughs> Mine will be very difficult to find. Hold on. Because there's like 27 million of them, you know? Let's see. My, Let's mine actually has 27 see on Storygraph, but that's because I've read two different versions of Poet X, so it's on there twice. Because I've read it as just audiobook and I've read it as an ebook. There's 79 on mine! <laughs> I the latest said... one being my, okay. my uh, Heart and Other Black Holes. Oh, I gotta reread that one at some point. It's so good. I we know. should do an episode on it because, like Roman, you're gonna look me in the eyes and let Roman exist. Yes. I'm writing it down. One, two. Not the twenty fourth big book being New Moon. <laughs> I, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. Listen, you know what book was after it? You don't even know what book that is. And the one, the one before it was Gone Girl. I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. Um, and let you know. Why are we in this order? Right. Anyways. Uh, the episode after this is gonna be the first book in the Wicked Village series by Kitty Robert. I will reread it. And then after that, uh, for as far as the eye can see, I'm going to be doing the Wicked Villain series for the Rockland, so... Should I read the first one? <laughs> I mean, if you want to, it's pretty short. Like, they're pretty short. They're under 200 pages, I think. And it's erotica, so it's easy. And the ending of that book, I still thrive on, okay? I think about that ending every goddamn freaking day. And Is I have to play the list of the point five stars. Am I okay? Am I okay? Listen, the way that she comes out in that white dress covered in blood... I'm vibing. Like, I'm just thinking about it. Hello, hello. I might have to read it. But no. Um, is there an audio book I can access? Um, yeah, no, it's uh, Jafar and Jasmine retelling. So, good times. Um, but yes, I want to continue the series, and it's been since 2020, I believe. I think it was like one in one of my first wrap ups ever. <laughs> so maybe it was 2021. But um, it's been a good chunk of time uh so i'm gonna reread it before i continue um but yeah that's the thing uh i'm gonna be reading those uh because i love katie robert at this point i mean i mentioned the tw the 25th book i rated five stars ever was neon gods by katie robert am i okay no it was a good time i loved it it was, it was great i recommend um so that's the next episode uh the perks of me planning so far ahead is that i know what the next episode is despite the fact that we're filming this almost two months ahead of time we're okay. You know, you know what has to happen before this episode comes out? I have to read two Ice Planet Barbarian books. <laughs> what if I Good luck, Bestie. Can I believe in you. What if I read the new Katie Robert instead? You, you know what? I'm... Happy, but... <laughs> Cause it's you like know what I'm gonna say, here. because I would rather you read books you actually enjoy, because you deserve more five stars in your life, or whatever. <laughs> I do. I'm gonna work on it. It's a thing I gotta do. Um, but yeah, I guess we should end this episode, which is currently just under an hour and ten minutes long. I know this is gonna be like we the definitely Wild Girls some stuff in the book. Um, okay, fine. Talk about the book then. I don't know what is there else to say. The, I really like the soccer game aspect with Rayle and like the one Max came to, and they had the conversation after she won. Blah 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 blah, and like you know. The way she was, like, swearing at people, and she was like, please don't, like, Naomi was, I bet he's like, listen, when you're an adult and we're watching football, you can swear. The rest of the time, your aunt says it's not okay. And she agrees to it, and she's like, hell yeah. It's really cute, the way that he helps her take care of her. Okay, but, like, that, and the one scene where she tries to sneak mice or whatever into her, her teacher's oh, room, God, and then everyone... The teacher who yeah. mistreats Wele all the time because Tina slept with her husband. So she just fucks with Wele's life and to the point where Wele, like, is, like, really upset about it and, like, going through all this shit. And then the only reason Naomi learns about it is because one of the other students' moms uh, messages her and tells her about it. 
And so she goes in to, like, yell at this teacher. And she's ready to go off. She's ready to go off. And Knox learns about it. And he's like, oh, no, because she doesn't know about the husband thing. Right? And Waylay's just hiding in the closet uh, when she gets there. And so she's like, oh, fuck. So she's like, listen, you cannot take this out on my kid. This is not my kid's fault. Okay? It is your husband's fault and my sister's fault. It is not my kid's fault. Shut the fudge up. Leave her the hell alone. Or else I will go to the board and report you. Because this is straight up abusing a child for no reason for personal gain right um and so uh and then Knox comes in and to like try to help her and she like goes off on her own and he's like I'm so proud of you and then her parents are there and they're like I'm so proud of you and uh help sneak Waylay out of there before she puts mice in the desk and it's a good time I like that scene honestly I love all the scenes with Waylay because obviously she's just but also Naomi was so real for that. Like I'm so proud of her. I'm like, I love Naomi's character development so much. Like I don't think you understand, okay? Okay. But but do I understand? They trouble you more thoughts, but like you know. You know. Do I know? I don't know. Why is there just a blank message from you on Instagram? You're cutting out. No! Happy Daddy Bad Week! My internet worked! That did not work properly in the song. La la da da. Yeah, I can tell it's not having a good time because Spotify podcast is not having a good time either. I don't want to keep all of this in. This is staying in, fam. So, um, ready to talk shit about shit? I don't know what we're going to talk about. Um, I don't really have anything to say. <laughs> well, my internet sucks. So at least it's recorded for my end, so you get to hear this nonsense. Hopefully Stingray will come back at some point. <laughs> oh, my God. The way it's even saying poor connection. Oh, no. Oh, my God. The way I was speaking, but my microphone was off, I'm sick. I was speaking the whole time, and you didn't hear me because it was off. And I was like, you're right. You're you're cutting out. And I'm like, why? what is going on? You couldn't even hear me. Then I heard, then I heard you say, maybe Stingray, Stingray will come back soon. I'm sick. How much did I say that you didn't fucking hear? Um, um The last I heard, you said you're cut, and then nothing. And then I started rambling for, like, ten minutes. What is, oh, why did it mute? I'm sick. I, I don't know. I know what's going on. Do you? Do you know what's going on? No. <laughs> is it because of the hot boiling water you dropped on your phone? No, it's hot. it wasn't boiling. It was just microwave hot. Be serious. It was broccoli water, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I know it was broccoli water, because you were cooking broccoli while we're recording a podcast episode. How could you? I started cooking it before we were starting to record the podcast. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, do you have anything else to say to the people before I stop recording? Honestly, Naomi wit supremacy, you know? Waylay wit supremacy? You know. I do know. You know, I'm still on the created su- supremacy um, mindset. Real! So <laughs> uh, real. Um, the way I'm going to have to make the description of that episode something to do with credence, and I don't know what's going to be yet. Creating supremacy. What more could you need to say? Okay, I'll just write, we are creatives. <gasps> yes, I'm writing it right now. Shh. I multitask. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that is this episode where we talk about this book. Um, will I read the sequel? I think it's already on my TBR. Uh, so, one day. It is. I One day, I'll read the sequel. Probably. In, like, three years, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got a lot of books on my TPR, okay? Let me live my life. Okay? There's, like, a lot there. No, I will not let you live your life. (laughs) There's an overwhelming amount of things there. Um, It's, like, kind of an issue. 
Especially when you realize, like, yeah, it's 100,000, but, like, I also have, like, 20 written down physically on sticky notes on the desk, so. You, you, you know, good times. Fun times sometimes, right? That's what we want? Um. No. <laughs>